Great, thank you. So uh, we're here with uh, Louis Gray. We're here at DevOps in Paris. And uh, Louis, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're here to talk about uh, how startups, we have a startup track this year at DevOps, how startups can uh, raise their visibility using various tools such as social networks, uh, but more than that. So before we get into that, maybe you can tell us um, you know, something about yourself and your background. Sure, absolutely. I appreciate that. It's fun to come out to DevOps and talk about startups. Uh, Google is the biggest startup I've ever worked for. I like to say that. Uh, previous to Google, I was working in various startup roles in uh, marketing and public relations, a lot of outbound, and really learning what was the best way to get the visibility out there. I think a lot of times companies look at focusing on their product, how to raise money, and then there's kind of that mystery. How do you go out and get that, that first story, get the early adopters to get excited about you? Uh, one of the cool things I've been able to do kind of as a hobby is be an early adopter and write a blog. And so I ran my own personal blog, Silicon Valley Technology blog, for the last six plus years. Uh, not as active as I used to be, uh, but I've gotten the opportunity to launch a lot of companies and make them go first. And so I think we've got a real interesting opportunity right now to help share that story of what works and what doesn't and, and help people do the same. Right, so how uh, do you think uh, startups should look for, I mean, what is the first thing they should look for in terms of the chronology? I mean, they, they have an idea, they start coding, and eventually they start to have testers. You, 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 I think you, you, you think it's important to have trusted testers. Oh, or absolutely. I think there's no one recipe that works for everyone. I think when you're a person who wants to get your stump startup and company off the ground, obviously a great idea is where you start. Uh, you start with a good idea, uh, you find out what it is that's going to take you getting from that idea to your first code. Um, and that means you know, finding a co-founder, finding out what the recipe is to put your data together. And then after that, when you finally have a product that you'd like to share beyond you and the rest of you inside the office, how do you get those first people who are going to give you the kind of feedback that you need to get better? Mm -hmm. And so that is a real challenge. It really depends on where you are in your market. How do you find the people who have influence and can talk about it and bring it to their own network and bring it to 50 people or 500 people? And then talk about bringing it to press and possibly the main market and mass media. So should people be building their product with uh, those influential people in mind or should it be building from day one for the broader market they want to address? They should build the product with themselves in mind. And what I mean by that is they want to build the product to what their original vision and idea was. If you have an idea which is going to be successful in the mass market, you need to think with that mass market in mind. You need to find a way, if you're speaking to an early adopter who might not be an average individual, find a way for them to see the future and see the vision of what you're creating. Uh, and that could be a challenge, but obviously what you don't want to end up doing is changing your product and getting away from the core values of what it was at the very beginning. Right, yeah, that, that's probably very important. So. Um, you want to interact with these people? How do you find them and how do you interact with them? How can you gain their trust and get them interested in you? The one thing that I always tell people is what's happened in communication and with the rise of user-generated content is you're no longer telling people to come to your website, come to me all the time. You have to go to where the people are. And in, in marketing and in PR, those people can really be anywhere. They can have their own blogs. They can have a popular YouTube channel. Uh, they can have a Facebook page, they can have a Twitter account, a Google Plus account, uh, but there are people who find a place where they're comfortable and have influence. Uh, so what you need to do is find out possibly in your marketplace who are your competitors, who writes about them, who uses tools like yours, who's constantly talking about the things that you care about. And uh, if they're good, if there's somebody who has influence, they're usually easily reachable, and that can be by email, phone, Twitter, uh, whatever it tends so to be. So something personalized, right? Absolutely. You don't. Uh, the last thing you want to do is reach out to one person and say, dear tech blogger, or dear evangelist. You want to come out and say, look, Alexis, I know you care deeply about the future of cloud computing, and because you care about this, I have a tool which is going to help you scale five times faster. And have a really clear message. You know, I've paid attention to you for a while. I know what you care about and then give you a, a deliverable, a call to action that says, I want you to please check out my site. I know that's not perfect, I have some bugs, but please give me feedback and what you think. And if you like it, tell your friends. Uh, really and, have a clear and send message. invites or... or uh, if that's yep. the right time for that. Uh, right. Sometimes you're a little more reticent. You're not sure that uh, the product is ready to go out to the next 50. Right. But for you, I know you're gonna be careful with the kid gloves and be nice about your feedback. So timing is of the essence for just about everything. When you talk to these type of people, so when do you go public? When do you go to the press? Is there is there a recipe for when you, when to know that you're ready to 
to, well, to, the, go to the next level. Steve Jobs has an interesting comment, which is that real artists ship. And the product is never, ever really done. If you leave it up to engineering, there's always a concern that they might not ever ship because there's always more work to do. Mm -hmm. So you need to make a decision. When is the product good enough where you believe that it would really benefit from outside input? When is the product good enough where you can take it out to users and have them really give you the kind of feedback that only comes from trying out the site themselves mm -hmm. and learning from the way that they behave on your site? What kind of pieces were hard to discover? What are features that they use most often? What are things that they've clearly said, look, I would use it more, for example, if it worked better on my tablet mm -hmm. or if it were immediately translated in French? What are those specific things that I need for it to get me more involved? Okay. So switching gears a little bit here, you also, uh, you're also you actually responsible for a program called GDL yes. at, at Google, and you're using tools that maybe startups can be using themselves as well. So you want to say a few things about this? Sure. Well, GDL stands for Google Developers Live, uh, and what it is is a really uh, impactful program from the developer relations team to help us kind of break down those barriers that exist, be they geography or language or anything else, and really help us reach the people who are creating intriguing content on our services. Uh, so Google Developers Live is based on YouTube and Google Plus Hangouts. And so we have the option to speak directly to those people who are making intriguing programs every single day in their time zone, in a language that makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody who cares deeply about cloud computing, if you care about Chrome and Android and Google Plus, uh, Google Drive and all the products that we use, uh, it really makes sense to take a, a look at Google Developers Live. It's at developers.google.com slash live. Uh, and you can find content on vast programs anywhere you want. So I, I'm a startup, I want to communicate to a wider audience, maybe to mm -hmm. an audience of developers. You yeah. know, how hard is it to get started? Do I need well, I to... With Google Developers Live, one cool thing about that is not only do you get the opportunity to hear from us as Googlers, but you get to hear about people who are working in the Google community. Uh, and so we have startups come on all the time. Uh, teams like YouTube are bringing on people who are using the YouTube APIs to come on and speak directly to you on Google Developers Live. We've featured other applications with the Google Drive team, the Google Plus team. Anytime that you can create a product and make it better using our services, we'd love to hear from you. Right. And we always ask, what can we do to make our products better, to make your life simpler, and help you get the word out? Sounds great. So, well, thanks, Louis. That's pretty much all the time we have for. Uh, where people can find you and where people can find GDL. Sure. Well, you can find GDL at developers.google.com slash live. Uh, we're broadcasting pretty much every day, and you can also find it at GDL on Google+. As for myself, I'm Louis Gray, and you can find me at Louis Gray on practically every social service in the world. Wonderful. Merci, Louis. Thank you.